In the heart of a distant mountain range, where the peaks touched the heavens, there lived a wise Zen master named Shiro. His eyes held a depth of tranquility that seemed to flow with the very rhythm of nature. People from far and wide sought his wisdom, eager to learn the art of non-reaction. One day, a young and eager disciple named Kenta arrived at the monastery, seeking to study under Shiro's guidance. Shiro greeted him warmly and sensed the intensity in Kenta's eyes. He knew that before the young man could grasp the essence of non-reaction, he must learn the art of mindful observation. Master Shiro, Kenta asked one day, how can I attain the state of non-reaction in the face of life's challenges? Shiro smiled knowingly and gestured toward a small lotus pond beside them. Observe the water, Kenta. See how it flows effortlessly, unbothered by the ripples and disturbances on its surface. It reflects the sky and the surrounding trees, but it remains serene and undisturbed within. Become like the lotus pond, and you will understand the art of non-reaction. Intrigued, Kenta began his journey of learning under Shiro's guidance. He soon realized that the art of non-reaction was not about suppressing emotions, but rather understanding their nature and not letting them control one's actions. Shiro taught him that reacting impulsively to life's challenges was like throwing a stone into the lotus pond, disrupting its tranquility. One evening, as the sun dipped behind the horizon, Shiro and Kenta took a walk through the forest surrounding the monastery. Suddenly, a venomous snake slithered across their path, poised to strike. Kenta's heart raced, and he reached for a nearby stick to defend himself, but Shiro gently stopped him. Non-reaction doesn't mean inaction, Kenta, Shiro whispered. We must respond wisely, not out of fear or anger. Let us find another way. They calmly retraced their steps, and as they did, the snake lost interest and moved away. Kenta realized that non-reaction didn't imply passivity. It was about choosing the most appropriate response without being swayed by fear or aggression. Over the months, Shiro presented Kenta with various challenging situations to test his understanding of non-reaction. Once, during a heavy storm, the monastery's roof started leaking, and Kenta rushed to repair it. However, he soon found himself frustrated and irritated as the rain poured relentlessly. Shiro observed this and said, Sometimes, Kenta, the storm is beyond our control. The rain will stop eventually, but your reaction only prolongs the discomfort. Learn to wait patiently, and your mind will be as calm as the lotus pond. As time passed, Kenta's mind became more serene, like the still waters of the lotus pond. One day, while walking through the village, he witnessed a group of people arguing vehemently about a political matter. Their words were sharp, and their faces contorted with anger. Kenta felt an urge to intervene, but he remembered Shiro's teachings. He paused and took a deep breath, choosing not to react impulsively. Instead, he approached the group with an open heart and calmly asked them to consider their emotions and the impact of their words. Gradually, the tension subsided, and the villagers started to listen to one another, realizing the futility of their anger. Months turned into years, and Kenta's reputation as a wise and compassionate individual grew far and wide. People sought his counsel, and he, in turn, passed on the art of non-reaction, just as Shiro had done for him. One day, when Shiro knew his time on Earth was drawing to a close, he summoned Kenta to his side. They sat together by the serene lotus pond, their gazes fixed on the reflection of the moon. Kenta, Shiro said softly, you have learned the art of non-reaction well. Remember, life will always present challenges, but it is how you respond that matters. Just like the lotus pond, remain undisturbed amidst the ripples, and you will find serenity within. Let your actions be guided by compassion, wisdom, and understanding, for that is the true essence of non-reaction. With those words, Shiro peacefully closed his eyes, and his spirit merged with the tranquil beauty of the lotus pond, leaving Kenta with a profound sense of gratitude and understanding. Moral of the story The essence of non-reaction lies in mindfully observing life's challenges and responding with wisdom rather than impulsivity. Reacting hastily to external events disrupts our inner peace. Through maintaining a sense of calm, compassion, and understanding, we gracefully navigate life's ups and downs, much like a serene lotus pond undisturbed by ripples. Non-reaction does not advocate passivity. Instead, 
It calls for a thoughtful and discerning approach, fostering harmony within ourselves and cultivating peace in our environment. Here are that three situations in which we should not react. 1. When someone is trying to provoke you. When someone is trying to provoke you, they are trying to get a reaction out of you. They may say or do something that is designed to make you angry, upset, or defensive. If you react, you are giving them what they want. Instead, try to stay calm and ignore them. 2. When you are feeling overwhelmed. When you are feeling overwhelmed, it is easy to react in a way that you will later regret. You may say or do something that is out of character, or you may lash out at someone who doesn't deserve it. If you feel yourself starting to react, take a step back and take a few deep breaths. Give yourself some time to calm down before you say or do anything. 3. When you are not sure what to do. Sometimes we are faced with situations that we don't know how to handle. We may feel scared, confused, or uncertain. If we react in these situations, we are likely to make things worse. Instead, take a step back and assess the situation. Gather as much information as you can and then make a decision based on the facts. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe my channel if you like this video.